molars. That's our predicament. While the upper jaw consists of three small incisors, a large canine and three unicuspid premolars, the lower jaw has three incisors, followed by a very small canine. Talpidae, the perfect living machine, except for the molars. Flectore senequio superos archeronta movebo. And why wouldn't we study Latin? We guzzle, graze, gnaw, nibble, and munch all the other dross that sinks and stinks in the dirt. Scritchity, scratchity, didacticity. Can you smell the delectable decay? Flectere senequio superos. I cannot bend the higher powers. Talpide, deep chest bone, burly, brawny digging organs, and an extra bone. Yeah, an extra bone to increase the surface area of our limbs, thrusting, stroking, sweeping, prodding, gnarling, quarrying, ramming, grubbing in the dirt in our tunnels of scum. And yes, masticating, shivers with pleasure. And 22 tentacles on our snout, our hairless snouts that we're not ashamed of. And an antenna for a tail, testing the delicious stink of the wind. And all this in service of all this to make clearance for the somersault, that trickety turning flip. Though many of us have forgotten, we know how to do it. We've a blueprint in our snout because it's too narrow to turn around in our tunnels and we can't back up in a natural way, though what happens all the time is not natural. So we must somersault and then we're facing behind and behind becomes in front. And in this way, we can push out the muck that we've dug out, push it up and out of our tunnels. Overaccumulation suffocates. Repeat after me. I will not be mummified under surplus value. There's a riot down below, under your feet. Careful how you go, suck sparingly on the teat. Bestow, 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 bestow. But don't forget to find naps in between hard bouts of mining? Hell yeah, we got unions. One mole united will eat the defeated. But no heroics. No, 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 no. For that's granting forgiveness to ourselves as perpetrators. And redemption with a little bashful R. Redemption only through accountability. Heroic is death without its sweet sleeping up. And property, never something natural, but founded in convention. And that is why we must put the earthworm on the block. Now we're at the heart of the matter. The question of the molars and the matter of an earthworm's heart, which is grit? You gotta know how to handle the grit as you feast. It's delicious hook, this intestinal dream, a slippery crook, this subterranean dream. It'll pull you deep in this lone tug-of-war team, a sublime ambrosial machine of spin. Have you believing you've hit a cornucopian seam? Another piece of Latin I tunneled into, caro data vermibus, a dead language, a language fit for mastication, a garbled message from another empire. Across history, the rise and fall a mountain to a molehill. In, in other words, I translate. Flesh given to worms, cadaver, don't become one. I do everyone a service ripping them apart, but consuming the earthworm can be deadly because of the grit. So listen up. The instructions for eating an earthworm are the following. Firstly, decapitate. Secondly, pull between the claws of the forefeet with repeated upward jerking motions of the head to cleanse the worm's outer skin, and then squeeze. Squeeze out all the remaining grit from the gizzard. The worm must be grit-free before consumption. The decapitation song. Grit in a gizzard is a hazard, a trick. It'll wear down your molars so you'll starve like a flickering wick. Consuming grit leads to corrosion and ruination. Ruination of the molars is the main natural reason for the death of moles. 
Hence, the earthworm's grit must perish with the state, because the inability to grieve for the bodies of others, withering, putrefying, blasted, incinerated from below and above, wears down the molars until we can no longer eat. And so we begin to starve. Until it's only a small sack of bones rolling along a little while, unable to somersault, unable to nap, until it tips on its side, one scrawny limb scratching at the air for traction and gives up its minuscule ghost. Like the petal of a flower, a puff of ash. Only the whole is true, not the petal or puff by and of itself. Why such violent cleansing of the worm? Because we're covered in luxurious fur. Our moleskin, hunted, skinned, flayed by the worms of capital, appropriation and distortion. This cannot continue. This caricature of the world wherein paid work becomes death. Now, now, now. Somersaults are rejuvenation, our necessary frolic, our hard look into the front of the behind, for the future is incalculable. Those are the facts. Topple, unfix, borrow, burrow, mixity, mixity, all of us, all of us, deep in our tunnels. Archeronta movebo. Tremble the underground and the curled rinds of oranges, our bodies, our bodies for the transfiguration of disaster, for the eye decapitated of its capital, the grit squeezed from its gizzard. We're re-emerging, reconstructing, reworking the work into a fruit pit of drossy glee, all for the cause, all for the cause of gainful work, to work, to wake, to work again, to play. All to say thank you for listening to this introduction to our chant of 10 necessary words as instruction for a long and happy life for moles. Dig, gouge, burrow, nap, burrow, gouge, Dig, nap. Oh, forgive me, I forgot the tenth and most important word, somersault. Who are you, America? That's the question Center Stage asked when we commissioned these 50 monologues. Want to learn more? Keep watching.